Hey everybody, it's a beautiful day here in Montreal. Uh, that's if you like rain, I guess. Um, today I thought, since it's raining and I don't have much to do right now, that I would show you how to make an alcohol stove the cheap bastard's way. And in the end, what we're gonna what we're gonna end up with is something that looks like this. Right? This is uh, the stove that I want to replace. It's it's okay, it still works, but I'd like a new one. What the heck? Don't cost nothing. So the stove is a very simple one, simple design, easy to use, spill-proof, foolproof, and that's why I like it. Got a few tools we're going to need to make it. Have the uh, T-square for a little measuring. We'll need to draw two lines with a uh, Sharpie pen. We'll need to uh, poke a hole in the bottom of one of the cans. We'll need to cut the cans with a pair of tin snips. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a uh, uh, X-Acto knife, uh, carpenter's knife, however you want to call it. We're going to need a little piece of stainless steel mesh right here. These are the two cans that we're going to use, once again, to produce this. And you may notice this is a very shallow uh, stove, and these cans are very <laughs> tall. That's where the fun is. That's what makes this version of uh, this particular alcohol stove unique. Then we got some uh, fiberglass that we're going to stuff in the middle. This fiberglass is about two inches thick. I've already cut it round uh, to match the shape of the can. The knife you don't need. I just like to have it handy because, well, I like a big knife. Who doesn't? Come on. Uh, and some would argue that you may not need this, but uh, I would argue that you do. It's good to have it around. Uh, represents one of the major food groups, the beer group. So uh, we'll get set up here. I'll uh, peel off the labels. We'll start. We'll start this little project. We'll have some fun. Hang on. Okay. So I've stripped off the labels from the cans. Uh, maybe. If you've ever done something like this before, you'll notice uh, there's a bit of glue and stuff that holds the label on. So my hot tip for the day is uh, don't use hot water to remove the glue. Just clean it out with a little soap and water and then run cold water on the outside. This had a label on the bottom as well. Uh, normally I don't really care if the glue stays on. It'll get baked off as you use the stove anyway. But uh, for the purists or people who care, you know, that's, that's the way to get rid of the glue. Just use cold water and scrape a little with your fingernail. comes off real easy. If you use hot water, you're just going to smear it all over the place. Don't do that. Also forgot to mention, uh, there was one other tool you need, and that's a pair of needle nose pliers. So uh, we're ready to go here. The first thing I want to do is decide... Uh, which is going to be the top and which is going to be the bottom. doesn't really matter. So I'm going to just take my Sharpie here like this, hold it on my, uh, my speedy square, and make a line just like that all the way around. Zip, 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 zip. Okay, so that one's done. And I'll turn this one upside down just in case there's a little difference. And do it like that. So, this is going to be my top section, so I'm going to sacrifice this. I'll just make an X there so I know to, to cut that. Uh, let's see, I think we're done with this and this. Let me get those out of the way. The next thing we want to do is take this uh, X-Acto knife. We are sacrificing the bottom. We're keeping the top. So I'm going to just cut a hole, like so. And like so, I think I'm done with that. Just bend that down. This gives me a way to take my uh, tin snips and start cutting this out. Uh, so let's just show you how to do that. I make two cuts. The first cut is just to get rid of the bottom. I want to come close to the line, but not too close, right? Because cutting this part is a little difficult. You gotta really wrestle with it. He'll fight you. And watch out for those sharp burrs that might occur when you're doing this. Hey. So just get rid of the bottom, and then we're dealing with this one. So like that. That's a rough cut, first part. Then 
This is going to be the bottom of my can, so uh, my stove. So I'm going to cut this. And usually, what I'll do is this has a pretty substantial lip on it, right? And it it's uh, it's difficult to cut around. So I make a series of cuts. Each one, no, oh, I don't know, about a half inch, three quarters of an inch apart. Not too deep. Don't want to get too close to the line. That's good. And then I'll go around and make the, the first cut. Again, I don't want to get too close to the line because I'm going to really fine tune this on the second pass. So two passes. Okay. Ooh, I'm getting a little close there. Careful. that's going to be the bottom of my stove. We can discard that, put that in the recycle bin, and this is going to be the top of my stove. So what I'm going to do is go find my glasses, and I'm going to cut that real close to the line. You can choose to cut the line, you can choose to split the line, uh, you can choose to leave the line. doesn't really matter. Just be consistent on each one. We'll come back in just a moment. So here I've cut the bottom and I've tried to come very close to the line. The closer, if I can remove more of the line, the, the shorter the profile of the finished stove will be. And now uh, I'm just getting ready to do the uh, top part here. Sorry, I'll, I'll subject you to this uh, real quick, just so you can see how she goes. These uh, tin snips are curved. So they do a, a left, a left-handed curve really nicely. Again, I'm I'm trying to cut the line off to keep a low profile. This is pretty exciting, huh? Uh, it's riveting. Oh, gotta be careful there. Cutting a little too far out. Now, this does leave a bit of a rough edge. Uh, in a previous life, I may have taken uh, a file or some sandpaper and tried to correct that a bit. But having done this a couple of times, I find that it really just doesn't matter. It makes no difference. Some people will go so far as to take sandpaper and sand off this finish that uh, comes with the can. It's kind of a greenish tint. But uh, why bother? It's just uh, it's a waste of effort. Doesn't, it doesn't improve the performance of the uh, stove when it's finished. So I don't do it. So there we go. There's the top half. There's the bottom half. Now, this was the size of the can originally. This is the size we're going to end up with. Right? And uh, I'll show you how to do that in just a moment.